Okay, thanks for coming by. This is How to Beach. If this is your first time here, thank you very much for coming back. And if you've been here before, thank you for returning. We very appreciate that. And since this is about How to Beach, I thought I would do a video on what it takes to move to a Caribbean island. That's where I live. I'm living in St. Thomas right now. And so I want to do a little bit of a video to tell you kind of walk through the steps of what it takes to get prepared um, and actually move to an island. I moved here in 2019, June of 2019. So I've been here for not quite a year yet. It's almost May. It's the end of April right now. So what I'll cover in this video is the preparation that it takes while you're getting ready to move to an island, what that entails. And then I'm going to go over the logistics of actually getting all of your stuff to an island, getting on a, cause whatever you're bringing has to go on a boat or a plane and they it's pretty expensive to get everything there so you got to really think about what you're going to bring with you and then we'll talk a little bit about the cost of what it takes to move to an island and then i'm going to talk about sort of after you move to the island getting adjusted to island living because there are some things that you have to get used to and then finally i'll go over some of the lessons that i've learned through the process and how it's been and we'll just kind of let you know my thoughts after being here for almost a year. So without further ado, let's get into the video. I'm sure you're anxious to see what it takes to move to a Caribbean island. Hey, thanks for coming by the How to Beach channel. I'm gonna be bringing you videos about beach tips, beach hacks, everything about the beach. How to Beach. Okay, so you've made the decision to move to an island. Now, what do you do next? Um, there's about a thousand things you've got to do just to get ready to move to an island. You got to figure out what you're going to bring, what you're not going to bring. Are you going to sell all your stuff? Are you going to put your stuff into storage? Like how long is this move for? Is this a permanent move? Are you going for six months, for a year, for two years? You got to figure out what you're going to do. My chair keeps banging into the wall. Um, you got to figure out what you're going to how long your move is going to be for and what you're going to bring with you. I asked a thousand different people this question through various forums and Facebook pages and it was really like 50-50. About half of them said bring everything you can including the kitchen sink and the other half were like don't bring any of that junk, you don't need it. You're going to find when you get to an island that you don't need half of the stuff that you thought you needed in your old life living abroad in the States or the UK or wherever you're coming from. And I, I found that to both sides of that to be true. There's certain things that I wish I would have brought and there's certain things I wish I wouldn't have brought. We moved here with one pallet, four feet wide by four feet deep by four feet tall. So a four foot by four foot cube. We brought all of whatever we were gonna bring fit on that pallet. And then I think we each brought two suitcases on the plane with us. And then we shipped two cars with us um, because it was a 100% consensus, consensus from everyone that we spoke to that said, bring your own car, don't buy a car on the island. They're horrible, they get beat up, the roads are bad, potholes, etc." So we did bring two cars with us. So let's just get into preparedness and let's just go over, I'm gonna quickly go down some of the list of things you need to think about bringing with you. First one is gonna be important documents. Um, like I said, depending on how long you're going to be there, you may need to bring some of your old tax returns for when you file your new tax returns or for whatever reason. I brought two years of tax returns with me, um, marriage certificate, uh, passports, IDs. My wife has a green card. She brought that with her. Any um, immigration documents that you're going to need, be sure you bring all of that stuff with you. We also had to bring the bill of sale from our cars that we bought in Florida with us to register them in the Virgin Islands. You need a bill of sale, you need proof of your old car insurance, uh, your old driver's license, so some of those things you need to research if you're bringing a car with you or if you're gonna buy a car. Those, there may be some documents involved with that that you need as well. And you're gonna have to bring clothes with you. Um, there's not a lot of clothing stores in the Virgin Islands where we live. There's no Walmart, there's no TJ Maxx, there's no Marshalls, there's no Macy's, there's no Target, there's none of those, I don't know where you shop for clothes, but there's none of those stores. We have a Kmart, and then we have some little boutique type places, but that's it. There's nowhere to really buy affordable clothes. There's some surf shops and that kind of thing. So think about what clothes you're gonna bring, even though it's an island, you still, I mean, you can just bring your swimming suit and some shorts and a shirt, depending on what kind of job you have, some flip flops. Um, but you need to put a little bit of thought into what clothes you're gonna bring. And then are you gonna go on vacation? 
you can get island fever living on these islands. So are you gonna wanna go to Montana to go skiing in the winter? Are you gonna wanna go somewhere where you need a jacket and warm clothes and gloves and socks? So if you are, you better bring that stuff with you here and pack it away somewhere. And if you're planning to move back somewhere, if you're gonna keep clothes in storage, kind of think about those things as well. So if you're gonna do traveling, you can't just move to an island with a bikini and flip-flops. You might need some extra clothes if you wanna go anywhere besides the island that you're living on. And you will wanna go somewhere besides the island that you're living on. Just various household items that you wanna bring with you. You gotta decide maybe you're moving for the rest of your life and you're bringing all of your furniture in a shipping container, you can bring everything. But if you're doing it like we did and you're just bringing a small pallet, you gotta really think about what you're bringing. So, I mean, we brought things like, we brought rugs that we bought in Morocco and Peru to kind of make our own home feel homey. We brought, um, we didn't bring any artwork for the walls or anything, which we have blank walls. One thing I didn't bring, I'm a little bit of a knife snob and I like to have nice kitchen knives and kitchen equipment, so we didn't bring any of that, so I've been struggling a little bit with some of those things. Um, and you gotta think where you're going to, like we don't get free Amazon delivery where we live. I can get sometimes some things from eBay delivered for free. So if there's things that you don't bring or you wish you had, you're probably not gonna find them where you live and you may or may not be able to get them shipped there. So put some thought into these things and bring a few things to make your own space feel homey, like some of your memories, like the rugs and things that we brought. But you're gonna wanna make new memories and buy new things too, so kind of figure out a balance for that. Sports equipment is another thing you may wanna consider bringing. I brought half of our pallet that we brought was my fishing equipment, and then it turns out that there's not really a lot of fishing on this island, so I wasted a lot of prime real estate bringing fishing equipment here. But if I do buy a boat, and I get into fishing off of my boat, I'm gonna be glad that I have it because there's not a lot of places to buy fishing lures and equipment because there's just not a lot of fishing by private, there's some charters to go here, but there's just not a lot of people that I found in almost a year living here that just go fishing. So whatever you're into, um, like I didn't bring a kayak, I love kayak fishing and there's really no kayaks to buy here. I just bought a used one off of Facebook for $500 that is just a huge dinosaur that weighs 5,000 pounds and I haven't been using it very much because it just sucks and I can't even get an, can't get one delivered here. So I don't know if I should have shipped it or not when we brought the cars, I don't know. But think about what you're in. I brought tennis rackets and some things like that. I didn't bring golf clubs because there's not a golf course on this island. It got blown off the island um, when Hurricane Maria came through here. Just think about what stuff you're into. Um, if you know, We brought snorkel masks and snorkel fins with us. So just think about what you're into and probably bring whatever sports you're into, bring that stuff with you. Or try to, if you do a, you know, you're gonna need to do a reconnaissance mission to go check things out. So don't just look for apartments or houses to buy when you're on the island that you're looking to move to. Be sure you go to the stores and see what things you can buy, what things you can't buy. That's not something that we did. So that's a good piece of advice to, even though you're not gonna buy the stuff, do some, sh go to the stores and do some, see what kind of shopping opportunities you have when you get to wherever it is that you're going. Also electronics, think about laptops, cameras, lenses, iPads, Kindles, whatever kind of electronics you want, you're not gonna be able to buy them probably where you're going. So, and you're not gonna be able to get them repaired. So I upgraded a lot of the things and then I didn't bring some things like, I wish I would've brought a different lens for this camera. I just have my telephoto lens. So I have my camera sitting way back over there. And then I had to buy, I'll show you, I had to buy this 20 foot long cord for my little lavalier microphone. Um, so think about the electronics that you're gonna need and the cameras and camera equipment and that kind of stuff and bring all of that with you. And even if you have old stuff and you wanted to upgrade it, upgrade it before you come here because you can go to Best Buy or order it on Amazon or wherever and get whatever you need. Vehicles is a big one. Uh, depending on where you're moving to, everybody that we talked to when we moved to St. Thomas said, bring your own vehicle with you. The vehicles here are horrible. They, the roads are horrible. They get beat to hell and back. So bring your own vehicle. And since I'm also a realtor, there's a lot of these really skinny, steep, hilly, horrible roads. So I really put a ton of thought into the kind of vehicle that I wanted to be driving. I had a truck when I lived in Florida. I didn't want to be driving a truck up and down these skinny little weird roads here. So I sold my truck and I bought a Subaru. It's all wheel drive. It's short, 
I mean, it's skinny, it's got good ground clearance. Um, and we actually, my, we sold my wife's car. She had a car that was really low to the ground. So we sold her car and got her a Subaru sedan as well. So we both have all wheel drive, good ground clearance, good suspensions, skinny, small cars for this island. Um, like we just bought a house in Puerto Rico and I'm looking at maybe buying a car to keep over there. And for Puerto Rico, it's a lot bigger island. There's 3 million people that live there. It's a huge island. There's more opportunities to find deals on used cars. So I'll probably just buy a car there. So think about the island that you're going to and figure out what kind of choices you have to buy vehicles or if you're gonna ship a vehicle and I'll get into the cost of that a little bit later. But um, that's a very important one to consider. In the description below, I'll put a list of some of the items that we brought with us that we're super glad that we did that cost a lot more here on the island, like long sleeve fishing shirts and sunscreen and reef safe sunscreen and some of the things that we brought with us that we are glad we put. I'll put a link, um, I'll, put a, I'll put a list down in the description below so you can check out some of the things we're glad that we brought. And maybe I'll put a list down there too of some of the things that we wish we wouldn't have brought. So I'll put some of that in the description down there so you don't have to listen to me ramble on if it's not something that you're interested in. Okay, so the next step, once you've figured out what you're bringing with you, you sold all your crap you don't need and you know where you're going and you've you got it all figured out, the next step is the logistics. Now, how are you gonna get all that stuff there? So we started off, we called to see how much a container was gonna cost. And a container was like seven grand to get there. I don't, I know we weren't bringing seven thousand dollars worth of stuff we didn't need it we had rented a condo that was furnished so we were like that was out at first you know i mean you have no clue when you start this process so i thought well we'll just get a container we'll put the cars in the container we'll put the kayaks in the container we'll put all of our stuff in there and for seven thousand bucks we'll get everything down there all in one big shipping container but it doesn't work like that they don't let you put the cars in the container so then I was like, okay, well, how much does it cost to ship a car? And then it was like about two grand per car to ship the cars. And I was like, well, that's four grand just for the cars. So then I thought, well, I'll just put all my crap in the cars. And then once we ship the cars, we won't have anything else. And that'll take care of everything. But then it turns out you're not allowed to put anything in the car when you ship it. I think mainly because they're afraid that while it's on the boat, somebody's gonna break in and steal all your crap. So you can't put the container, the cars in the container. You can't put your stuff in the cars. You got to ship everything separately. So it really starts to add up and get more difficult. Um, the logistics of everything really can be a nightmare. We lived in Florida, so we were lucky that we could drive our cars down to where the boat was leaving from and put our cars onto the boat. And we, the problem is you had to bring the cars to one port. I think the, I can't remember which one was this. One was in Miami and one was in Fort Lauderdale. They weren't too far apart, but they were in different areas. So we had to take our pallet to one place and we had to take our cars to another place. And you had to do the cars first. So we had to rent a vehicle that we like took all of our personal belongings out of our cars and rented a van and put the boxes into the van. Then we drove one car down and dropped it off. And then I followed in my car. Then we went back to get the other car and then I followed in the van and then we took that car down and dropped that car off and then we drove the van to Fort Lauderdale to drop all the stuff off and then we had to drive back to where we were staying and then the plane left the next day because we wanted to be sure we didn't book our flight out the same day that we had to hit all these other logistical points um, so and I think we had it easy being that we were in Florida and we could do a lot of this ourselves I don't know if you live in Ohio or Michigan or California or wherever if it's a lot more difficult or if there's a I know there's some companies that you can pay to come pick the car up or pick your stuff up um, and there's several different points you can leave from but figuring out the logistics is a big nightmare and the best thing I can just tell you is make lots of phone calls get lots of quotes because there was a big difference in how much it cost to ship a car with one company versus another company we ended up kind of finding a third-party broker who was even cheaper than the people he ended up putting he put the boat they put the cars on a boat and we called that boat directly, but this broker had a deal worked out with them that it was actually cheaper to go through the broker. So um, do your due diligence here and just do a lot of footwork and legwork and figure out the best deals. So you're asking yourself, wow, Jeff, this all sounds really complicated and expensive. What does all this cost? Okay, I'm gonna get into some costs now. I'm gonna be looking down at my notes because I can't remember all this. So. Um, breakdown of my moving expenses. The car transportation was $1,600 per car. So two cars, that was 
and then they charge you a road tax fee that was 16 cents per pound for the car. Each one of our cars weighed around 3,200 pounds, so it was about $384 per car, which was $678 for two cars. Um, then once you get to the island and you have to register everything, you have to pay a license fee of $175 each, that's $350. Bucks. Registration, $525 each, that's $1,050. Driver's license fees of $55 for each me and my wife, that's another $110. And then car insurance for both of us uh, in St. Thomas was about $1,100. So I will put a list here of all those fees and I will put a uh, total here because I don't have it in my notes here, but I'll total that up and tell you how much it cost. That was just for the cars. We had plane tickets um, to fly from Miami to St. Thomas. So you, I'm not gonna put how much our plane tickets cost because who knows where you're flying from or to, so you have to calculate in your plane tickets. And then also we had the expense of the rental car since we had to drop the cars off first and then put our stuff in the rental car. Plus we had a couple days in a hotel in Miami and we had some food and traveling expenses. So you'll have to calculate all those in as well. I'm not gonna do mine for you because they're not gonna apply. So a couple extra expenses that I'll just talk about quickly and our travel expenses was um, to think about was the checked bag expenses um, because we had extra bags um, that was an extra $80 and they were overweight then once we got to the island we had to rent a car for a couple days because we obviously got there it takes like five or five to seven days for the vehicles to get on the boat to the island from from Miami so we needed to rent a car for a couple of days once we got to St. Thomas so we paid $350 to rent a car for a week in St. Thomas. And then the cost to ship the pallet, uh, like I say, it was four feet by four feet by four feet, and it weighed about 500 pounds when we dropped it off. And the cost to ship the pallet was $283, which actually that's cheaper than I thought it would have been. So I would go crazy, ship two pallets maybe for 500 bucks to ship two pallets. You could bring quite a bit of stuff. Like there were some things that we could have brought that we didn't, but anyway, that was very affordable, 283 bucks for the pallet. Um, in the first week of being on the island, we spent about $1,500 on things like groceries, mops, mop buckets, cleaning supplies, just all the things you need to outfit a new place to live. We spent about $1,500. Um, and then when we moved here, we rented a one bedroom, a one bedroom condo, one bedroom, two bath condo um, in a cute little resort community that's on the beach and we paid $900, $1,900 a month for that. So we had to pay our first month and our last month up front, plus a security deposit. Um, that was about $5,700 for that. Um, so all of my costs all added up, including my flights and things that I didn't include for you guys, was about $15,471 was the cost that we got from pulling the trigger, and loading up our stuff, chipping the cars, getting the rental car, getting the getting our new place to live, everything, 15 grand is what it cost us to move here. And that 15 grand didn't include things that I bought before we left, like things like snorkels and fins and some of the things like that we bought, new swimming suits, upgraded camera equipment, any of that kind of stuff. I, that, those things aren't included in that 15 grand. That 15 grand is just getting from point A to point B, securing a place to live, paying the first last month's rent deposit, all that stuff. Um, so that's what that 15 grand includes. Now that you are on the island and you just can't believe it and you're living the island dream that you've always wanted to live, let's talk a little bit about just getting adjusted to island life because there are very, I mean not very, they're not huge differences, but there are things you need to get used to. Things like the power goes out all the time, things like um, the internet goes out all the time. So, you know, and it seems when you're on vacation for a week and the power goes out every day for 45 minutes or for two hours, it's, it's no big deal. You just go to the beach and you go swimming. But when you live here and it happens and you're trying to do work or get something done or you just put $300 worth of groceries in the freezer and you don't know if the power is going to be out for two minutes or for two days, those things get really frustrating. And it's July and it's 100 degrees outside and there's no air conditioning or there's no fans and that's the day it seems like the power always goes out when there's no breeze flowing off of the ocean and you're just sweating bullets in your house so those things can wear on you and get very annoying very quickly things like island time you know when we got into our new condo the washer and dryer didn't work and the stove didn't work and the landlord 
was just like, well, just call the repairman here. And she gave me his number. So I called the repairman, didn't answer, left a message. Next day, called the repairman, didn't answer, left a message. Like day three or four, I finally get a hold of the repairman. He's like, oh, no worries, man. I come by and take a look. And he finally comes like two days later. And then he's like, I'm going to need some parts to fix this. And I said, well, when are you going to get the parts? And he was like, yeah, man, when they come, I come. So I don't know. I think it took two months to get the washer and dryer fixed and maybe a month to get the stove fixed. Um, so dealing with island time, depending on if you're a type A, type B type personality, that can be frustrating as well. You have to really just learn to go with the flow and not freak out and just like things will get done at their own speed. And it's kind of nice once you get used to it and you adjust to it. I think it took me a little while. I'm still like, it's funny too, like everybody's so chill and slow, except when they get in their car. If you go, <laughs> like we drive on the left side of the road here, terrible roads, like I was saying, skinny, windy, up a mountain, um, cause this island is like this, it's not a flat island. And so it takes some use, it takes some getting used to driving here. And so you start off pretty slow when you're driving here and you're just like, I'm on island time, it's cool, I'm chill. And the guy behind you is honking and blaring and trying to pass you on these scary roads. So island time applies to everything except for driving, not on the roads, they go very fast. And then just the fact of how much more expensive everything is here. You know, you know that it's gonna be more expensive when you move here and you expect it. But then when you're at the grocery store and a, a loaf of white Wonder Bread costs $9 and you're just like, I'm not buying that. And then a thing of fresh strawberries costs nine dollars and you're like i guess i don't need fresh strawberries that bad and a thing of peanut butter is like fourteen dollars and all these just ridiculous prices and you're like well at first you're like well i guess we'll splurge and buy lettuce today because lettuce like fresh vegetables on this island they don't grow anything on this island so it's almost impossible to find fresh fruit and vegetables here and by the time they ship it here it's about to expire so you got to figure out what day the vegetable shipment comes and then buy the vegetables and then eat them that day and then wait till next week when the next boat comes with vegetables. And you kind of, you start off with the mentality that you're gonna splurge to buy these things and you finally have to figure out you're not splurging, you're just grocery shopping. Go, another thing you have to get used to is you have to go usually to three different stores every time you go grocery shopping. Like we go to one store to get fruits and vegetables, we go to another store to get meat products and dairy products and then we go to another store that's kind of like a little, mini Costco to get like canned goods and toilet paper and that kind of thing. And one thing, like when we first moved here, there was a Kmart, so I went there to buy a mop and a mop bucket. And it was like $22 for a mop and a mop bucket. A little Mr. Coffee coffee maker was like $48 at Kmart. I did discover at the Home Depot, you can buy some of these things cheaper. So you got Home Depot prices are regular prices, the same as they are in the States. So you, you learn to go to different stores and you gotta, you can't just go to Walmart and buy everything you need. Those days are over. You gotta go to some little different places and to get all the stuff you need. So that's something that you have to get used to. It's just like a day of getting supplies every week or two weeks, depending on how often you go. Um, our power bill was around $400 a month. Sometimes it was 480, sometimes it was 390, but on average, I'd say our power bill for a one bedroom, 900 square foot apartment with us being pretty frugal, sitting in the air conditioner at like 82 degrees and trying to have the windows open as much as we could, our power bills ran in the $400 range, so not cheap. We have some of the most expensive kilowatt per hour prices anywhere on the planet here. So that was a very big expense for us. But look for a place that has generator or solar power backup is a huge plus when you're moving to an island like this. So that's something to think about too. That's basically everything you need to figure out from preparation, logistics, getting adjusted to the island. Um, I'll just talk about a few lessons we've learned from the process now since we've been here for almost a year, be a couple more months before we've been here for a year. But some of the lessons that we learned about moving to an island, the thing about the generator was a good one, the, having the power included was a good one. We never anticipated a $450 a month power bill for a one bedroom apartment. That was a shocker when we got that. So try to ask some of those questions beforehand if you can figure that out. It wasn't even something on our radar that we had thought about. We were surprised how nice all the people are here. Some of the online things, forms that I got into, the people were super rude and 
protective of their island and didn't want newcomers. The people here are very friendly. They are standoffish to newcomers here um, for two reasons. Like One reason is a lot of people come here and they can't handle it. Island life is harder than you think it's going to be and a lot of people wash out pretty quickly here or they spend two or three years here and they just move on to other, to other things or other islands or travel to new, new places. So it's kind of difficult to make new friends here because a lot of people are standoffish because people just don't last that long here, at least kind of in the expat communities, if you want to call them that. So it's a little bit more difficult to make friends. The people are nice, but finding real friends is a little bit more difficult here. That was something that we found. And it's funny the different islands that we go to since we've been, we've island hopped around to a couple different islands. And um, like this island doesn't have as much, I don't think, as much authentic sort of islandy type food. Um, there's some tourist areas for the cruise ships and stuff, but they're all kind of catering to the same thing. There's still, there's more burger places than anything, than any type of islandy type food here. But when we were in the British Virgin Islands, it seemed like there was a lot more island type food and when you're in Puerto Rico there's the Puerto Rican food you, you better like Puerto Rican food because you can't hardly find anything except Puerto Rican fried food when you're in Puerto Rico um, so the food from different islands varies a lot so that's something to consider the inability to find nice things if you like nice knives to cook with or you like you like 5,000 count thread bed sheets you're not finding that stuff here. You're shopping at the Kmart, and there is a commercial kitchen store here. I haven't been to it yet, but it's impossible. It's, it's harder to find nice things. So if there's any nice things in your life that you'd like to have, bring those things with you. Pay the extra $250, bring a second pallet just of nice things. I wish I'd have brought a few more nice things with me. Um, but then on the other hand, like some of your nice clothes and things, like I didn't even bring a tie. I haven't needed one yet or a jacket or anything like that. So. The closet, like there's now that we have our power included and we have the air conditioner on basically all year long, it keeps the humidity out of our house. But when we were trying to keep the windows open and keep the power bill down in our last condo, there was always humid. I had a dehumidifier in there. I had little dehumidifier, uh, whatever they are that suck the water out. Um, they have a name for them. Anyway, they're just little things you buy at Home Depot. But it, there's lots of humidity. So the clothes, my wife's nice shoes, like leather molds in the closets here. So if you have leather shoes, your leather pants, your leather whatever outfit you like to wear, don't bring it. It's gonna mold. This even if you put if you go running and you put your running shoes in your closet and you don't let them dry out and they're sweaty, they're gonna mold. Everything will mold very quickly here. So that's something to consider about bringing nice things on that side of it. Like, don't bring your nice clothes. Something else I didn't really think about that surprised me is because we're so close to the equator, it gets dark at like six o'clock all year long, 6.30 right now maybe. So I, it's not a big deal. It's just not something that I thought about, something that I learned about living here. It's like light from six to six, which I was, I used to live up north where it didn't get dark till 11 o'clock in the summertime in Montana. So it was a little bit of a shock. So just something to consider. Like if you have a nine to five job and you get off at five, you're not gonna have a lot of time afterwards to do outdoor activities every day. So that's why I mentioned that. A few things like in the more touristy places, things look nice and beautiful. And when you travel around, not just this island, most of the islands that we've been to, there's just a lot of trash and things aren't kept up as nice as you see in the brochure. So that takes a little bit of getting used to as well to see that and just it's kind of a bummer, but it's just like every island we've been to is kind of the same way. There's some cleaner than others, but like just seeing the amount of trash and things on the islands is something that took a little bit of getting used to as well. But to wrap it all up, we love living here. We're having a great time. It's beautiful. Um, it is, it's expensive, but it's beautiful and it's worth it. And we're really enjoying it. We are going to be here for at least two years. My wife has a two year contract here to teach. And so we're going to see how it goes. We're going to see if I can make any money. If all you people tell 1 million of your closest friends to get onto this blog and sign up, then definitely I can stay here and do more vlogging, blogging and YouTube stuff. Um, I just got my real estate license as well. So I'm going to be selling real estate here in St. Thomas. So if you want to move here, I can help you find something to rent or buy. So a little plug for myself there at the end, but that's it. If you have questions or comments, I always appreciate keeping the conversation going, put them down below. I'll do my best to answer any questions I can for you. And again, thank you for coming by and I hope to see you on this island or tell me if you move to another island or if this was helpful to you to move somewhere else. Don't forget 
to subscribe to the channel if you found value in this um, and hit that like button. It helps push it out through the YouTube algorithm to more places. So please like the video, subscribe to the channel. There's going to be more good stuff coming out. And if there's anything else you want me to cover in more detail, I have a lot more notes here um, of what we spent or I can break things down for you. So let me know how I can help. Again, thanks for coming by. See you in the next video.